the purpose of Wealth Talk is to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you on the subject of building your wealth. Wealth Builders recommends you should always take independent financial, tax, or legal advice before making any decisions around your finances. Welcome to episode 32 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the Membership Director for Wealth Builders, and live and by my side today. Good to be back with you, Kevin. Yes, hi, good to speak to you again, Chris, and uh, and we're spending some good time together and we've heard some really good contributors over the last few episodes, quite a lot actually, haven't we? Yeah, thank you to our guests and thank you to our last podcast guest, which was Shaz Nawaz, and um, lots of people giving us really good feedback, talking about property tax with yeah. that time. Yeah, and I guess tax is an overlay, isn't it? We talked about that for every asset and probably Shaz could have kept going for hours if he was going to talk about, you know, your own property, I think he mentioned rent a room. He would talk about pensions. We could talk about all of the seven pillars, and each one of them will have a different way of dealing with tax. So it's really quite a critical strategy. And in a podcast, you're never going to get all of that across, but it's definitely critical to have a tax overlay. Did. And of course, one of the biggest taxes is inheritance tax. And it's a voluntary tax. It's almost a tax paid by people who like the inland revenue more than they like their kids, you know. But in reality, it's not that. It's a lack of planning. So I just thought it might be useful just to try and build the thought of leaving a lasting legacy and kind of put that into the mix of people's thinking as they start to turn the wheel on building their wealth. So they don't wait until they're wealthy to protect their wealth. You know, we know how we have a mantra within Wealth Builders, which is to create, to build, and protect wealth. And a lot of people get that the wrong way around. They think it's, they protect once they're wealthy, but you don't do it that way. You do it from the very beginning. In fact, it's enshrined in the Declaration of Independence Mm -hmm. that we've written. It's it's number seven out of seven, but it's still very critical. And and I'll read it because it's very relevant. It says... um, New Declaration of Financial Independence Number 7, passing on a legacy together with the principles and wisdom to maintain and expand it. In other words, the whole idea of legacy is not just to protect money, it's to transfer wisdom and transfer good practices and principles to the next generation so that they don't just get the money, they get the wisdom as well. And that's really quite critical. And you know you can do that from the very beginning, Chris. You don't have to wait until you've got that at the end. Mm. Well, obviously, walking through our founder members, the process, aren't we, of building wealth? And one of those early elements, other than the foundation, is is the roof and the protection of your assets. And, and that's very much integral, isn't it, to the legacy? Well, it really is integral, and it's definitely worth trying to draw the threads of this together. But if you think about the very beginning, the very first module in the wealth building principles is the reason why Mm -hmm. and what's the most common reason why we get legacy it's 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 really you know protecting people and leaving something that is substantial for people that they love Mm -hmm. and that was absolutely my reason why and continues to drive me forward and those people with that strength of reason why are almost unstoppable but what what stops them i think sometimes is they they don't really put the practices into place to protect that wealth. So good intentions and bad execution. And for those who maybe don't know, you know, my father who died very young and he had a business. Uh, I don't think I've shared this part of the story with you, Chris. So it might be useful because to me it's quite critical. So, you know, he had a business. He was organizing workers who used to, in the North Sea Oil, and he would be like an agent, you know, bringing in laborers and bringing in uh, steel workers and, and those sorts of things. And uh, a nice little business. It was definitely showing signs of making some good progress. Well, I could definitely tell we had better cars and we had a better house compared to what we had originally. But unfortunately, as we both know, he died very young. He didn't have a business that worked without him. He didn't leave a will. And he didn't really have any life cover. And as a result, he left the family with debt. Not great, but he was a great guy, but just didn't execute things because people either full on jobs or full on businesses often just don't do the things that they should do 
to take care of the roof, for example. So making sure they've got a will and updating it, making sure they have got powers of attorney so that even if you're not dead but you're just not well, things can be taken care of, making sure that you know how you own your home and putting things into trust because a trust is a way of passing things on to the next generation because that's essentially what a trust is. It's a way of holding an asset or something that passes on to the next generation with some rules. And this is the essence of good legacy planning. It's thinking about your whole way of building wealth like a trust fund mm. and creating rules and starting really from the very beginning. Um, more than happy to share how I do that. Yeah, and we've literally just come out of a meeting, haven't we? And we touched on this and um, kind of see the eyes light up and it, we often have this effect when it really becomes much bigger than the person themselves and they start thinking about the family and being inclusive and yeah, putting imagery around it as well. Exactly right. And maybe I'll explain how I approach that and why it always is a light bulb moment for anybody we share it with. Because, you know, we had a coaching call today when we actually had a meeting uh, with someone who's very you know, great at what they do, very busy, very successful in earning a living. But there were some gaps, weren't there, in some of the things that they were doing to build their wealth. And the reason why was family, but the family weren't included in the plan. It was almost like this person was trying to build their wealth to support the family, but doing it on their own. There's a way to try and include the family from the beginning. And this is the way I articulated, Chris, which is why we thought it would be useful to share, is, is this, so that we know that when we're asking people to create a wealth plan, we want them to create a level of income that will flow from assets that will make them financially completely independent for the rest of their life. So let's think about that. So if we imagine, and what's the average figure we get, Chris? £10,000 a month. £10,000 a month. So decent you know, income for most families. From assets, to be clear. From assets, not from income. Um, so it's not £10,000 a month in a job or £10,000 a month in profit from a business. It's £10,000 a month in this example that would flow no matter whether you were there or not. Whether you showed up, didn't matter, the money will show up. So you just that's the whole point of a legacy. The way to think about that is almost to imagine that the very objective of achieving £10,000 a month is a business in itself. So the conversation might go along the lines of something like this. I'll use you as an example, Chris, okay? So, so Chris, you know, you have an objective and I'm very clear. You've got a very strong legacy and family commitment. What I want you to do at the minute then is imagine you're creating a brand new business. Not a real business. We're not going to create it in company's house. We're going to create it together in our mind. And in our mind, we have an objective. And that objective is to write a paycheck for life of £10,000 a month, net of tax, net of all costs. So you've got £10,000 a month coming no matter what, month in, month out, forever. That's the objective of the business. So it pays you, Chris. It pays a spouse, if you had one. It pays your children. It keeps paying forever. Now, that's a laudable business. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. That would be something worthwhile spending some time on. So let's give it a name. Well, let's call it Team Rodwell for <laughs> the purpose of the podcast. <laughs> okay. So say it was Team Rodwell or whatever it would be. You know, you create a name. And the name doesn't necessarily have to reflect your name. The name doesn't have to reflect your business you know, so you could just create something that resonates with you. And what I often find when I say to people, think about a business name that would resonate with your family, that they would see a trust fund with a name that would mean something to them. And you get all sorts of different names. You know, you get Big Oaks, Little Acorns, Red Giraffe, Black Panther, whatever. And what's fascinating is what people choose. But once they've created that name, I ask them to go back to the family and think about a logo or an emblem that they would put to that business. You know, so in your case, if it was Team Rodwell, you know, what would that logo mm -hmm. look like? But And that's a fun process, sat around a table, you know, on a, on a Sunday, isn't and, it? And, yeah. you know, what, what happens is you get, oh, my 14-year-old son created a great picture of this and we want to just formalize that. 
and almost just begin that process of getting you know children involved and sometimes spouses because you'll often find somebody's taking the lead role in the wealth building and somebody's taking a more passive role you know somebody's a driver sometimes a passenger not always but very very often that's the case but also sort of bringing them in as well so it's not just the business name it's a fictitious business but it's a very very laudable business and then say so you have the role Chris of being the MD and in support we are acting as long as we're invited to be a part-time FD not owning any of the shares not owning any of the equity not taking that money away from you but trying to support you in making that work and that's the essence of how it starts uh, and then you then start to determine the roles that you need to create to achieve that mm-hmm. 10,000 so it's not that it changes the wealth building principles mm-hmm. you still got to do your reason why you still got to know your wealth dynamic you still got to know you know do your debits and do the roof and all of the things and use your leverage all of the things we've been teaching but you're doing it and inclusively mm-hmm. uh, sharing that with the family as opposed to just doing it on your own yeah. so it's adding another layer of support mm-hmm. and another layer of visualization that usually is quite powerful and and many times when i do it with husbands and wives together you physically see the change in their emotion you know it's quite a dramatic thing to see mm. and another powerful impact is as we've seen and we've talked about this on previous podcasts is i don't have enough time so in terms of building wealth you have to find the time for that and when you suddenly make it yeah. a much bigger purpose a bigger why yeah. it's not just about you you suddenly find the time because it that importance is is now stronger well exactly in the same way as if you've got a job but you create your wealth business then you give time for the wealth business and you earmark that time and it sometimes just becomes easier to visualize that and you box it in as Rodwell team Rodwell or whatever it would be um so to me it's very interesting to think about the legacy by beginning with the end in mind rather than looking at the protection and doing those things later on so how else might someone get the family involved in this process kevin well i think the important thing to do certainly is a starting point um is to get spouses to do their wealth dynamics because when you understand how both sides will interact you can overlay them and see how they work you'll often see challenges you know areas of challenge i'll give you some examples so somebody might be really interested in property but their source of leverage might be the equity in their home but the spouse could be all about the security of the home and they'd be unwilling for that home to be used now you remember i've made mention this myself mm-hmm. so one of the decisions that that i made very clearly Uh, which was in consultation with my wife who's the boss mm-hmm. was don't tap into the equity though she didn't say that she mm-hmm. said you know i understand what you want to do and that's you but please do not put the home at risk so the home has never been at risk mm-hmm. and it will never be at risk so there is no mortgage and there won't be one and we paid it off fast and that could be a way to recognize now i didn't do the wealth dynamic mm-hmm. of my wife but i knew that's her mm-hmm. highest value order was mm. security and that was really important so you can either do that by having that conversation and understanding where the conflicts arise uh, but also looking at the wealth dynamic which is an easy thing to add on i think you know we've got a a link where people can go and do additional yeah. wealth dynamics pop that in show notes yeah i've mean i've heard many cases where where people have done this in relationships and they suddenly become sympathetic and yeah thought back to all those times where there's maybe been a, a disagreement and they suddenly go aha okay well now i understand that that's just your way and in the future we'll just both be mindful of of each and, other and of course that awareness is really important because it is about respecting the dynamic it's not saying you know we there's a cause for disagreement it's understanding where that cause could sh- show itself and then deal with that you know so that's a very powerful thing and i know there's been um, there are some people we know who use the equivalent version of wealth dynamics called talent dynamics which is not necessarily focused on wealth it's more focused on where you add value mm-hmm. ideal for people in jobs for example mm-hmm. but there's a specific version for children right so that if you're not that you need to do that but if you were curious or you had 
children who were definitely showing signs of being interested in in the kind of monetary side of things, not by being greedy, but just by being curious. Yeah. Then looking at their talent dynamics could be an interesting way to include them. Yeah. I think we heard from one of our founder members in the foundation course talking very actively about how their kids are hugely yeah. interested in doing some things. Well, yeah, looking the, the one member looking at the business pillar and um, really involving the children and asking, you know, what kind of ideas have you got? And uh, I think they went out car booting and selling items and, you know, teaching the children the value of money and, and learning some sales skills along the way and making it fun. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, in I think I wrote uh, the book called Save a Fortune, which again, can make available for free to anybody, Chris. Um, It's the how to completely eliminate your mortgage loans and credit cards fast. Okay, that was the first book I wrote and um, that actually helped me pay my own mortgage off in seven years flat, which was a pretty good outcome. But one of the secrets in the book, and there are 12 secrets, is to what I call in the book, become a great salesman. And it's not really that, it's just a play on words. It's to recognize that sometimes we have in our life clutter and things that are just not serving a purpose anymore and then you can sell those things identify things that are redundant not needed and kids are perfect for that you know um i remember one one of my sons would would you know i used to always go to charity shops and buy books and then take them back to the charity shop these sort of things and he was getting all my books and saying, do you need that, Dad? No, it's, mm-hmm. and what was it, Music Magpie or something? <laughs> and he was selling all the books and he sold all the old CDs mobile phones and, and yeah. CDs that nobody listens to anymore for Spotify, you know. So there's just different ways kids can look at what's redundant, sell it to create a value, mm-hmm. and then show them the value of money, either a bit for themselves, you know, in terms of a savings account, mm-hmm. or to... Even in some cases, you know, have it regularly and they almost see themselves as being a mini part of Team Rodber. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they're contributing something. Now, all these things sound a bit unusual, but they're, they're not if it's about including them. Because so many even see adverts on the telly these days, which is money is the hardest conversation for people to have. And it certainly is for older generations. So bringing it to the table, and that's the best way to do it, at table. Yeah. and having conversations and being open and honest about that, yeah. which is the reason why it's best for husbands and wives to be completely comfortable with themselves because when they are, they can bring the kids. And you can immediately see the differences in how your kids react. You know, some are natural business-minded. They're thinking of creative solutions. Some are very cautious. You know, I've got three kids and they're all completely different in the way they approach things. So even though I'm the same and my wife's the same, you know, they are very, very different and how they will end up contributing to our family trust fund by participating is very, very different. So being unique to spot that or spot that uniqueness is a key skill to then try and help that. One of our clients um, who's been on the podcast is a contributor, Mark Stokes. Yes. Um, very passionate about uh, young entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. So, well, we don't teach entrepreneurship at school, so why not feed that entrepreneurship and encourage people to see Value. It's not business, really. We're not trying to create millionaires. But increasingly, though, children are open-minded and creative, and you can use that creativity not necessarily purely for academics, but for seeing ways they can add value. And I think it's a brilliant thing when you see creative kids doing it that way. We should uh, take this opportunity to congratulate Mark because his new book actually has gone to number one this week, which is Advice to Your Younger Self. And what a brilliant idea, you know. So having best part of 50 people thinking about what advice they would give to their younger self. And I bet half of the nuggets in that book, and I've yet to read it, of course, but I will do avidly, but I bet vast majority of the lessons of things that they would have taught themselves when they were much younger. Mm. And, and it would be about embracing and being more open-minded and about sharing. Mm. Great. So I hope we've given our listeners something to think about there. And if you are listening right now, maybe... Use this and, uh, and start thinking about a name for your wealth business, your, your legacy that you wish to leave behind. Do you know, and I'd love to hear some stories about, you know, people doing that. Because what I've noticed when people create businesses of their own, they will often create a business with the initials of their kids. They'll often have some significance. So go off, create a wealth business, you know, with that huge plan to create 
financial independence and then abundance for you and your next generation, the generation after that. And think about them toasting you in 150 years' time saying, you know, raise a drink to our old Kev. He set it all up, but we've taken it on. We haven't just spent the money. And think about a name and really do think about it. And if you get a name that you really resonate with, send us a note. Let us know you've, you've thought that this is a great idea and you've done something with it. And I know many of our clients have, and I'm looking forward to some feedback. Just thought this would be a useful interlude from the focus of dealing directly with the uh, assets on their own. Yeah, yeah. We're just taking a, a brief break, as you say. We spent quite a few episodes on the property pillar, pillar mm-hmm. four, yeah. and we're of course moving through the pillars in yeah. order, and we'll be moving towards the business pillar. Very Your favorite soon. pillar, my favorite pillar. Yeah, we'll be getting to. But that's such a huge topic. I need to get my head in gear and say, how are we going to teach this in the right way? Uh-huh. But start now. Make your own children entrepreneurs. Think about your wealth as a business and get ready for the, all mm. the lessons we'll share with you on the business pillar all to come yeah. very soon. And of course, in between podcasts, we're very, very busy supporting our founder members. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everyone's really, really, you know, coordinating, gelling. We're building such a fantastic community there within the foundation program. And um, one thing we've picked up on on our coaching course recently is is an area we've touched on before and it's it's around this area of leverage and we talked about this in episode 11 actually where we went through the FIRST yeah but with our founder members we've we've kind of spent a bit more time haven't we and I think it's worth maybe sharing some of those insights on next week's podcast I definitely think so the the whole idea of needing leverage look you can't create wealth without leverage It's simple as that. You have to get some form of leverage in play. And if you imagine that the wealth is a business, then you've got to choose the right form of leverage to bring to your business in the right order where you are today. And that's where people have been struggling just a little bit. So I think giving them a good insight and sharing that with a wider audience, Chris, will be really helpful. That would be great. Okay. Look Mm -hmm. forward to that, Kevin. Thank you. Okay. See ya. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget that we are constantly updating our resources inside the Wealth Builders membership site to help you create, build and protect your wealth. Head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership right now for free access. That's wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership.